Hello again. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a block like this. Now, the interesting thing is this has lots of names. I'm actually working on another baby quilt. Yes, another baby quilt. <laughs> Pink one's due in July, this one's due in August. And it's all about the farm. So the blocks are named according to kind of being on the farm. So this is called Duck's Foot in the Mud. Well, if you look at my fabric choices, I use brown for the mud and there's the gold for my goose tracks. <laughs> I thought that was appropriate, but you may also find this called bear paw, goose tracks. That's one thing I've discovered. These quilt blocks, they have all sorts of different names. So this was a new one, duck's foot in the mud. So all the blocks I'm gonna be working with for a while are kind of named for uh, kind of barnyard farm type stuff. So this is what we're gonna be working with. Now, this block I'm doing a little bit smaller block than I usually do because it's for a baby quilt. So this block is going to be six inch finished. And guess what? Ha ha ha, let's take this apart. It's a nine patch. One, two, three by three. Three times three is nine. This is a nine patch block. This is easy. You've got two, three of your light or your inside fabric, whatever you'd like to call it for your goose track, three squares. And because this is a nine patch and it's a six inch finish block, that means each of these blocks when they're finished is two inches, which means we're dealing with a two and a half inch square unfinished. Okay, so that means one, two, three, four, five. Five two and a half inch squares. Well, how much easier than that can you get, right? And guess what these others are? They're half square triangles. And if you've been following me at all, you know how to do those. Now, normally I would have used my method to make eight of those at one time because I need two of these blocks for the baby quilt. But in order to show you, I'm making two at a time. So I'm gonna need, make two sets of these. So for the half square triangles, we're going to need the mud, <laughs> our background fabric, and our goose track, our light fabric. And because I need a two and a half un uh, unfinished block, then I cut these squares three inches. So you can do it either way. Add a half inch to your unfinished, but what I do is say, I need a two inch finished half square triangle, so add an inch. A lot of places you'll see they say add seven eighths inch. Who the heck wants to deal with an eighth of an inch? So just add an inch, and it makes your math so much easier anyway. And you get a little more wiggle room, and you're not wasting that much fabric. So I have two squares of three inches. Okay, let's get started on our blocks. As I mentioned, we're needing a two inch finished, finished half square triangle, which means I'm cutting my squares three inches. So a three inch of the background and a three inch of the, um, the goose, I guess. So the mud and the goose. Then what I do is in this case, my lighter fabric is easier to see. I grab my Omni grid ruler and all we do is my Omni Grip ruler has a nice diagonal line. So I put my diagonal line on one edge of the fabric there and even it up with the angle, the top here of my, my square and the bottom and it should be a nice even angle. And so there we go. So I've marked my half square triangle and this is, and then you put that on top of your other square. So you make, put those together all nice and neat. And I always pin. And in this case, we're gonna need two of them. So I've got another one ready to go here that I'm gonna pin. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this to the sewing machine and so, 
a quarter, a quarter inch on either side of the line. Do not sew on the line or you will be very unhappy with yourself. You're gonna sew a quarter inch over here and a quarter inch over here on both of your blocks. And then we'll come back and see what the next step is. Now that you have your seam done, you've sewed on either side of your line, then take your ruler and cut on your line. Now, sometimes I'm at my ironing board when I do this, so I just take it over there and I use a shears and just cut on the line. So you don't necessarily need to use the rotary cutter. Then, bingo, look at this. And in this case, I finger press to, in this case, I'm doing it to my gold. It really doesn't matter in this uh, block as you're not exactly nesting your seams with these. Okay, so look at there. Now you have two half square triangles out of one pair of three inch squares. And so I have two others that I've already pressed because before you move on to the next step, make sure you press these. I finger pressed them, but you wanna press them before you square them up. So I have pressed this one. Then I take my Omni Grid ruler again that has my diagonal line on it and I line it up, I line up my diagonal line on, on the seam, on the diagonal. Let me get this so it's, there's my two and a half. So you line it up and you want this, you're gonna trim this so it's two and a half inches. So you're gonna wanna make sure you've got edge over here and edge over here to trim and your two and a half inch line is inside the block so that when you flip it, there's still enough to trim. So get your diagonal, and do your first cut, okay, and turn it around so now your nice edge that you've trimmed is already here and you're going to line that up with, keep your angle again, but now your two and a half inch mark on your ruler is going to be on the line that you already cut. And then you can trim the other two sides. And look at there, you have a very nice, and I see this one little edge here. There we go, didn't quite get cut. So now I have my pretty half square triangle. Look at there, and I have two of them. And so we're going to pretend, actually I am going to go press these and get them all pressed up and trim them up. And then we're gonna come back and put things together. And while I'm doing that, the next thing you're gonna need to do is cut your blocks. Well, I think this is pretty straightforward, people. You're going to need three of your goose fabric, your goose feet fabric, and you need three two and a half inch squares. So I just cut a two and a half inch strip of fabric and cut it into my two and a half inch squares. Um, and the same with my mud, I need two I need two muds, so I need two, two and a half inch squares of my mud. So if you're working with um, not full yardage, just, you know, cut your two and a half inch squares. Otherwise, just strip, strip cut, and then believe me, you'll use those two and a half inch strips somewhere. And in this quilt, I'm using a lot of similar fabric, so I know I will be as well. So you cut your two and a half inch squares out while I go and press my half square triangles. I now have all of my half square triangles done. As I mentioned, I'm doing two blocks, so I really need eight half square triangles. So I would have preferred to use the method of making eight of these at a time. I've got a link up here or in the description, you'll see a link to my YouTube channel video on how to do eight half square triangles at one time. So if you're making multiple of these blocks, that is way more efficient than doing them two at a time. But in this case, to show you that if you just wanna do one or two blocks, or actually in this case, one block, then you'll need two. Okay, now we have our three, two and a half inch squares of our goose feet, <laughs> two, 
two and a half inch squares of our mud and our half square triangles. Now it's time to lay it out. This is gonna be important of how you lay this out so that you get it right. So I put my, my geese triangles or squares in the middle because basically you put your mud in your left corner followed by an outline of your geese feet, your goose feet. Then I put my other mud in the upper corner. Okay, that's the easy part. Now we've got to get our, I don't know, I guess the toes, gotta get the toes in here. So the angles, it'll look funny if you don't lay it out right. So what I would suggest is you get one made and make sure it's right and then Use that like I'm doing, <laughs> looking at one that I know is right before I do it. The other thing you can do is draw this out on a piece of fabric. Oh boy, draw this out on a piece of paper. And then, cause it's basically a nine patch. You can do this grid, no worries, you got this. And then color in your, your dark and your light. That way you can have that sitting next to you and as you lay this out, you make sure you get it laid out straight. Okay, so now we've got that done. Now it's just a matter of sewing your rows or, <clears throat> excuse me, your rows or your columns together. I've decided I'm going to sew them my rows one at a time. So I just take the center one and I flip it over on top of the other and I even up everything Get them nice and neat. These first two are super simple because it's just a square on top of a square and they should be identical. And then get my, and there's no seams to match at this point. Just make sure your squares are nice and neat. And then I'm gonna pin this quick and you're gonna take this to the sewing machine then and whoopsie. Help, help if I get all layers. You're gonna take it to the sewing machine and just sew on each of the sides there, making sure you're sewing on the right side of things. Then come back, make sure you lay it out. And in this case, it'll be really easy because you've got your squares at the bottom and your triangles are the one at the top. The thing to catch yourself is when you bring it back to the table to grab these last pieces is making sure you've got this opened up right and you get this in the right place here. Okay, that's kind of a gotcha that if you don't, you'll end up with it on the wrong side and then things might not work very well. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna sew these together and then I'm gonna come back. Like I said, I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna put this here, this here, this there. That way I'm gonna have all of my rows completed. Okay, I got all my columns sewn and pressed. And if you're like me, you do that and you go to the iron board and you press it and then you mix it all up and you grab it and throw it down and now we gotta put it together. Okay, that's fine. So then if you were like me, the first time I did this, I went, okay, okay. My brown has to be over here, my left corner, and then I have to have a brown up there and I have to have my two things there. Oh, that worked. <laughs> When I laid mine out the first time, I came back and went, okay, my brown's up there and I have a brown over there. Okay, oh my God, did I sew columns or rows? What did I do? But you know what? It works either way. As long as you make sure as you're sewing them, you're doing your columns. And then as long as you get to that last one and you put it on the right way, you're gonna be fine. It all works out. And in that case, now I've got them all flipped funky on me. So let's see. There's my, br my brown. Oh no, no, I did. I did okay. I did mine in rows the first time I did it in columns. Now I'm confusing myself. But there we go. All works out as long as you're consistent. So there we go. Now we have our rows. So now all we have to do is put our rows together. So here is where you need to match your seams. So as you fold them over, match your seams. And when I pressed, I pressed my middle row to the center. 
So my seams point in the center in my middle row, and on my outside rows, I have my seams going out. And that way they will nest very nicely because this is the place where you're matching your seams. So now we just put these together, keeping an eye on our seams there. And then you're gonna pin and sew a quarter inch. Your quarter inch should hit that little mark right there where your, your um, seams intersect. That's your quarter inch. And that way, if that works, you're gonna have nice points on your, whoops, that fell apart. <laughs> You'll have nice matching points on your duck's foot in the mud. So we're gonna sew that one. And then just like the other, you can just come back, fold that up, and then take this one and put it on top of there. And as long as you match that. So I'm gonna take all three of these over to my sewing machine, whoopsie, and have them set next to it. Therefore, I can just sew these together and then pick up the next one and sew my next row on. And then, you press them very nicely and everything should match pretty. And I'll show you the finished block. And there we go. We have our duck's foot in the mud <laughs> or your bear paw or your goose tracks or whatever somebody has chosen to name this block. But there we go. Yeah, it looks like a foot and there's my mud. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, here's the deal. So. Got it all done, nice and pressed. This is the perfect time to use pinwheels to press your back seams because there's quite a bit of bulk with your half square triangles in these corners. So if you just take those seams and just twist them so you're, you're uh, pressing kind of opposite, then it just makes it a flatter, um, a flatter pressing in those corners there. Okay, here's the other thing. You're going to probably want to use a leader. A leader is just a piece of scrap fabric. I don't know if you can tell, this scrap fabric has been used quite a bit. So you just use it and use it and use it and then you throw it out whenever you're tired of it. It's just scrap fabrics that you've used. But what I do is as I'm sewing my seams, I put the leader under the foot of my sewing machine and then I start sewing on it and then as I get close to the edge, I put my fabric that I'm gonna stitch right there next to it. Not on top of it, but very close next to it and feed it under the machine. And a lot of times by this time, you may need to lift up the foot of your machine and get this fabric under there. That will help guide your, um, your thread and your needle over onto your good piece of fabric that you're sewing. Otherwise, particularly when you're working with starting to sew and it's a, um, it's a triangle, it's, it's fabrics that crosses, a lot of times your foot will get eh, eh, bumped up against there, jammed up. It likes to shove the fabric into the bottom and it's just, it's not pretty. It's not fun. So use a leader. And the other thing that comes in handy is a purple thang. T-H-A-N-G. Yes, that is what it is called. But a lot of times I use it to hold my fabric down, to guide it once in a while. Um, it just comes in handy for this. So those are a few tips to help make this block go super easy and super fun. And it really is a very simple and quick block. Your half square triangles and a bunch of squares. How much simpler you can, can you get almost? Hope you enjoyed that. Thank you so much for watching and take care and have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. I very much appreciate it. If you wanna make sure you don't miss a single video I published, hit the subscribe button below and then hit the bell icon. And that way you will be notified whenever I publish a new video. But you can also find me over on Facebook, facebook.com slash Wendy, the initial J Haney, or I have a Facebook group for those of that you that love quilting, needlework, books, wine, and wellness. You can find that at facebook.com slash groups slash life fulfilled. The name of the group is life fulfilled dash quilting, needlework, books, wine, and wellness. You can also find me over on my website, wendyjhaney.com. I will be doing more blogging over there eventually. 
as I get more of my videos done. Well, I'll be blogging about those. But also, maybe you see some things that I'm making here and you're going, ooh, wow, I just don't want to make that myself. Well, a lot of those products will end up over there on the website that you can purchase for your friends and family. Once again, thank you so much for your support and I appreciate you watching. Thank you.